What's up Guiding Bolt fans, this is Nick and today we're going to be taking a look at a really cool product. Oh hey, you can see me in the glare. A little way for the camera. A uh, little really cool product from uh, Wizards of the Coast, and this is the Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus Dice and Miscellany Set. As you can see here, this is kind of a uh, companion product for the Descent into Avernus uh, campaign setting. It's got a little bit of dust on it. We'll brush them off. So that's the book. What we're going to do is just uh, go ahead and crack this open, and uh, this was $22 and some change US. I picked this up off of uh, Amazon, and it's really, uh, you really get a good bang for your buck here. Um, just a quick overview of what's in here before we jump in. It's got uh, the dice. There is a uh, rolling tray or a box that's felt lined for you to roll your dice into. There is a small map of Avernus, and uh, there's a bunch of, uh, the really cool thing that I think is the uh, different cards that come with it. Um, it's got uh, kind of uh, companion cards. I know that there is a uh, trinket chart and we got some uh, some of the um, monster cards for the, the various devils and demons. And you can see I got some of them kind of lined up here around the table. And uh, there's a size comparison chart so we'll go ahead and uh, look at some of them next to each other. So let's go ahead and uh, dig in. And conveniently I didn't make this little uh, mark here but there was a little rip in the plastic so we can actually get this out of here pretty easily hopefully there we are and i think let's see here where does it open up at now right there it looks like there we go so you can see that the dice are actually sitting in the tray here and this tray actually looks, uh, it's pretty nicely constructed. It looks like just kind of a really hard uh, card stock that it's made out of. Let me go ahead and pop the center piece out here. So this is the, uh, this is the bottom piece. This is the top part of the box. You can see we got, uh, looks like Bale there, the symbol of Bale on the uh, top of the box. That is the uh, Lord of Murder, I believe. So that's pretty cool looking, uh, pretty cool looking box. What's nice about this, you can see that, so that is it closed up right there. Got the Dungeons and Dragons symbol on the back. But uh, what's nice is you can actually continue to use that little plastic insert for your dice. So if you're carrying these around, you don't gotta, you know, they aren't rattling all around in there. So you can uh, kind of keeps everything in place if you want to keep that plastic insert. So that's kind of nice. We got some, uh, oh, I should have, uh, I might have to make another video translating this. I believe, uh, like I said, there's like a Rosetta Stone uh, card in here that tells us what this actually says. I'm going to just, I'm going to guess this says Dungeons and Dragons since there's the and sign in between there, but uh, we'll find that out at a later date. So here's the uh, top cover for the dice. You can see here that uh, we got, it looks like there is four six-siders. We got two 20 siders, a uh, D10 and a percentile dice, a D4, a D12, and then a D8. And uh, these looked kind of brownish when I was looking at them through, through the plastic, but uh, now that I actually have them out, they have a really nice kind of red, red tone to them. It kind of looks like a uh, almost like a fire and brimstone like uh, color. And uh, some cool markings in them as well. It almost looks like a somebody something clawed this thing. You can see like scratch marks in it. Uh, it was designed that way. It doesn't actually have scratch marks in it. It looks like it was just kind of designed that way. So that's kind of cool. Take a look at the uh, D20 here. But you can see it just kind of, uh, as you rotate it around, it has a nice kind of red hue to it. So that's pretty cool. So that is the dice. Let's go ahead and take this out. And actually, I'm going to flip it around to the back, and I'll just kind of read what it says is on the contents here. That's on this right here. So we can you can see that it uh, we already covered the dice. There's 11 in total. There's a durable felt line box that functions as two dice trays. That's kind of useful. So if uh, you uh, you already have or you can use half of it, and your uh, friend or somebody else can use the other half. There is the uh, map that I mentioned. So that's a 10 by 5 or 10.5 by 15.75 map. Uh, size comparison between the devils and demons, and then there's 20 double-sided cards uh, with encounter tables and story content. So, like I said, that's the, uh, in my opinion, that's the coolest part about this. I already have, I mean, countless dice. I don't know how many dice I have, but for 20 bucks, when you can get dice, two trays, uh, and a bunch of companion material, that's uh, 
that's a worthy invest in, investment in my opinion. So let's go ahead and get these cards out of here. I'm going to scoot some of the stuff off to the side so we can open up the map that I know is in here. Let's give these dice a roll first and see if they're uh, see if they're worthy. Roll them all, but I'm really just looking to see what the d20s roll. See if I'll keep them around or not, right? So we got a 16 and an 8. Oh, but the 20 was right there, so they seem worthy. Might have to keep these behind the DM screen and use them myself. All right, first up here, it looks like this is the uh, this is going to be the map and the comparison chart. Let's go ahead and open this up. So I'll probably have to pick up a little frame for this or something, just so I can have it uh, have it out for the players. Maybe uh, maybe laminated or something like that. So that's a nice looking nice looking chart though. We can see that we have. Horde of Demons on top, and then Legion of Devils down below. Let's take a look at the map first before I uh, throw some of the minis out there. So this is the uh, first layer of Hell Avernus map, and I, I this is also in the uh, book, I believe, but it's nice to be able to have it here in front of you. And this is a player-friendly uh, version, so it's not going to give anything away if you have it out there on the table for the players. And it's been a little while... Uh, since I read the campaign setting, so I don't remember what all the locations are, unfortunately. But I am—I uh, do recognize uh, looking at this map. I know this is uh, that's kind of like Tiamat's uh, chamber up there. <clears throat> so, pretty cool. Really nice to have uh, have this. Let's flip this around and take a look at these. Uh, take a look at these demons and devils, though. So you can see here, I got. Uh, Let's take a close-up first, I guess, and just kind of go over each one of them. So this is uh, Inogo's Baylor. There's a uh, Quasit, the Dretch, um, Barulgura, Hezrau, and then the good old, might have to zoom in a little bit there, Abyssal Chicken down there. And then for the Legion of Devils we have down here, starting uh, left to right on the bottom, is a Bone Devil, Spine Devil, Ice Devil, this uh, massive pit fiend is Lucille. We have a uh, chain devil, uh, barbed devil. This is on the bottom. Imp, Ernest, a bearded devil, and then there's a uh, human hell rider for comparison. And then this big guy flying up here is a horned devil. So let's take a look at some of the miniatures I have. I don't have all of them, unfortunately, but there is the horned devil. Here is the barbed devil. Legion Barb the Devil, the Imp. So they're pretty, uh, right, pretty good uh, size comparison. Actually, let's put all three of these because we have kind of a tiny, medium, and large character. So there they all are. Those three miniatures. Uh, let's see here. This is a Spine the Devil, the Abyssal Chicken. Move him over so we can see that. There we go. There's the Abyssal Chicken, just this tiny little guy. Let's get a close-up of him. If you haven't already uh, seen this miniature, it's pretty funny. <laughs> just a little angry sack of meat is what it looks like. Here is the uh, Quasit, which is just absolutely tiny. And I like how they kind of take on the form of the, uh, the demon that they follow. So these guys are all kind of like based around or um, they kind of resemble... Yinogu, who is the, uh, <clears throat> the the demon that they basically worship or follow. So that's pretty cool. I like how they did that, and they're not just they don't just all look the same, right? Depending on the uh, on the demon that they kind of go along with. This is a uh, bearded devil. Uh, where did he go? Oh, right there is the bearded devil. Um, Barulgura, and then the Hezrau. We'll move the. Uh, Legionnaire out of the way just so you can see them all. I do have a uh, Aaron Yes, but if you watched my uh, unboxing video of the uh, Descent into Avernus miniatures, unfortunately he's still broken. I haven't actually fixed his leg yet. I just got to put a little bit of glue on him. I did have a broken Zerial as well, um, but thankfully I got that. Uh, I sent that back to Wizards and they sent me a brand new one all put together. Otherwise the hammer and the halo were broken off of it. So this is, uh, this is the size comparison chart. Let's go ahead and move all these guys off here, and then we'll just take a look at the rest of the cards that came along with this. I think I got them all. Yep, all right. Fold that back up. All right, so first off here we have, this is the, uh, 
kind of the Rosetta Stone for um, fiendish language here. You can see all the, uh, the uh, alphabet and numbers as it corresponds. On the back we have just a, a little, uh, looks like a little note from Volo. I'm not going to actually read that to you, but uh, that is there if you pick this up and want to read that. This is a nice little companion chart. This is the uh, trinkets, trinkets that somebody can find or one can find in Avernus as you're wandering around. And uh, as you read through the uh, campaign setting, um, you'll see references to some of these items in there. So to give you a little more, uh, little more background on it, help you figure out what they do. Uh, strange Encounters. This one's kind of cool. I'll have to, have to read through that in a little more detail. So you can see here on one side, this is the, uh, it's, you roll a d20, so there's uh, 1 through 10 on one side, and then uh, 11 through 20 on the opposite side. Oh, let's, uh, let's actually switch this around here. Now we can see the front of the monsters. So this is, uh, we'll, uh, I'll read this one. This is kind of, I think, the uh, intro card to, uh, to the box. So it says, Dear Reader, it is I, Volothamp Gadarm, bringing tales from the infernal realms. To enter the nine hells, one must be foolish, unfortunate, nefarious, or fearless. Needless to say, I am the last of these. Whether you enter the plain of Avernus, the first layer of the nine hells via magical portal, the amnesic river Styx, or a fantastical climb through the world tree peril awaits. Here you hold my accounts describing fiends both diabolical and demonic, who rampage across Avernus and wage the eternal blood war upon another. Allow this journal to be a warning to stay tucked up safely in your fluffy bed. Let Volo take the risks and suffer the diabolical consequences of curiosity. To adventure, Volo Thamkadarm. So that's kind of a cool little intro. Uh, I'm not sure what this is on the front. I was thinking maybe it was a template for like a spell or something, but it just looks like a, just a cool like design. All right, enough blabbing. Let's take a look at the monster cards here. So here we have the imp. You can see here, this is the imp miniature. So it kind of, so he's kind of carrying a ball of fire on his, uh, on his back. And then if you flip it over, it gives you kind of the uh, some imp lore on the back. So that's the again. I'm not going to read all these, but this is uh, this is the cool part of this set. Like I said, I already have more dice than I know what to do with, but it's nice to have this companion uh, material to take a look at. Here we have the Bone Devil. Disappointed I didn't get this miniature. He just looks like just a badass. Look at that guy. Lucille the Pit Fiend. Kind of want that axe. Horn Devil. Take a look at the back too. If you're, I guess if you want, you can pause the video and try to read that if it uh, comes out nice enough on the camera. <laughs> uh, the Spine Devil. The Ice Devil, another one that I wish I had. Next, the next box, right? I'll get him the next box. Legionnaire, yes. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly down below. I never know on this one. Actually, I never know on a lot of them, but I'm really curious on that one. <laughs> uh, here we got the Bearded Devil. The Barbed Devil. Oh, look at that. I forgot. Uh, there is actually two... Uh, Barb the Devils in the uh, miniatures um, set. You can see this guy has uh, the miniature has a uh, ball of flame. I do have both of them. This guy in the in the picture here has the uh, double axes. So that's the Barb the Devil. Here we have the Chain Devil, and I believe this one was also a rare that I did not get. The Baylor. That guy's just a brute. Nasty little dretch. Just foaming and frothing at the mouth. I don't know if that's like, guessing it's blood kind of all over him. Looks like he uh, did himself up in war paint though. Oh, this guy too. <laughs> the closet. Kind of nice to be able to see what it actually looks like because you can't, uh, it is really hard to tell when you're looking at this itty bitty guy there. So that's the close up of him. 
We don't want to see him in high def, that's for sure. Uh, his row. Baro Gura. This guy's quite the abomination. He's got big bones and stuff protruding from every part of his body. And last but not least, the good old abyssal chicken. And let's get another close-up of that guy. There's the miniature, so you can see that that's the, uh, looks like he's in flight. I wonder if, that's a good question. Can abyssal chickens fly? Or are they like regular chickens where they can kind of like get up and get a little bit ways into the air and then fall back to the ground? And I also wonder, you should look this up just for a funny video. I used to, uh, I grew up on a farm, so we used to do this all the time. Uh, we used to hypnotize our chickens, we called it. You would lay the chicken on the ground, draw a line in the dirt, lay the chicken on the ground, and then stare its head down the line, and it would just lay there. We used to call that hypnotizing a chicken. I wonder if you can do that with an abyssal chicken. Yeah. Only Volothamp would be able to tell us that, I suppose. All right, well, that is the uh, that is the video. Thanks for uh, viewing as usual. Um, if you enjoyed the content, please remember to uh, throw a like at it or uh, go ahead and comment down below. Uh, as always, we put out weekly content, so be sure to subscribe if you want to uh, keep up with what we're doing. And until next time.